ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video by yours truly chat please say hi to youtube rogue i'm gonna be asking you to edit this because i gotta go pick my daughter or brother just so you know got you homie we're gonna be reacting to the 2.1 live stream the majority of my goddamn chat has already watched it because they have uh well, I thought they had mental illness and woke up too early, but then I forgot that a lot of these guys live in various parts around the world. So some of them it's 10 p.m., some of them it's 5 p.m. Some of them actually do have mental illness and woke up at 4 a.m. to react to this live stream. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and watch it fresh. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to seeing Acheron. The last time I seen the story, I won't yap too much because this is an hour and 22 minutes long, but the last time we saw the story, Acheron was throwing straight hands with, uh, with Sam. I'm hoping to see a little bit more of that in this 2.1 live stream. If we don't, it's cool. All right, let's go ahead. Let's do it. I'm not gonna have too much. It's a lot of it's a lot of goddamn content, guys. A lot of content. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, that's what I say. That's what I say to my stream. Who the hell is this, bro? I, by the way, I love this guy. This dude, I know I know he's the writer, but I don't know what it is about him. I literally love this dude, bro. He has good energy. Don't pause. You know what? That's a good point. That's a good point. We'll try not to pause. Wait, the way's not here? They propped him in? <laughs> they propped? It will take... No, you got a good point. You got a good point. It will take too much time. Uh, we'll try not to pause. Yeah, man. Dude, the way's not here. What the hell happened there? So there's no need to hide. Are we getting right The city has its dark side. Oh, it's Gallagher. Sounds like Jax, bro, from League of Legends. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Jax can't hide his, his voice. Sober one with this glass of a dream within a dream. Imagine if I had a real weapon. It's only when the sword is unsheathed. Actual Jax moment. Yo, that's a clean ass beat. This is where it ends. Wait, why she sheathed her sword? Wait, what the? Block Studios theme park, most popular entertainment center in Pentecost. Bro, she the did a shum post up. Reflects its history in the most authentic way. She unsheathed her sword. I'm so confused. All this free time. Why not make the most of it with me? <laughs> Zesty. There he is. I stakes my rewards. All for nothing. Using Robin's Bro, death as a I'll be honest ship. with y'all. Zest hit it, bro. Zestering kit looks so cool to me i don't know about y'all but his his the gambling trope with his concept looks so cool I'll ruin this beautiful dream holy tartalia bro the grandest what the hell is that bro's a whole ass fatui harbinger oh my god that cap is drippy bro they did not just slide that in there oh, for nothing using robin's death as a bargaining chip was was that was that a victory? Holy shit! What the? F Where bro come out of the blue with this harbinger power? Ladies and the zest levels over nine thousand. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My bad, guys. My bad. They're doing way too much. Here. So you're a Shiba Six. Just subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Ready to unveil your Oh cards. my god, that was way too many scenes, bro. They tried to put a lot in those scenes. That was a lot of shit. There was a uh, chicken chicken wing boy. Uh she unsheet bro. I swear, dog, Acheron is the only character in this game that represents bleach, bro. She got a whole ass zompok toe in a <laughs> she got a whole ass bonkai, bro. Hey, hey, Who is hey, this guy? Hey, hey, <laughs> Bro's drip is magnificent. Let or not, your world has a day night cycle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. 欢迎来到崩坏新穷铁道2021前瞻特别节目,我是代班主持人,迷路。just so you guys know it's not going to be a lot of interacting with chat i'll look over periodically but we're going to try and pay attention to everything they're talking about a lot of dialogue a lot of yapping his spirit is with us so the way's not there 
And say hello to the Trailblazers first. Hello, Trailblazers. It's great to see you all again. I'm the Honkai series writer. We have a new friend from the narrative team today. Hello, everyone. I'm the narrative designer of Honkai Star Rail, Teacup. Bro's name is Teacup. Here's an old friend of ours. Having him here makes us feel at ease. Same kind of ease. Felt when the family promises someone absolute security. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm very they brought in Blade? <laughs> It'll be a lighthearted, funny, and happy vacation story. Why did Firefly and Robin? I knew you would ask that. Don't worry, I can explain. Yeah, spin your story. During the version 2.0 preview live stream, I mentioned that we were damn they talking fast. I can't keep up with that. What's gonna happen later? Right now it's just the beginning of version 2.0. Guys, thank you for all the Twitch subs. So I heard that the Trailblaze mission in 2.1 is going to be presented in a multi-narrative format. Is that true? Pinocchio的故事作为一个呃众多角色齐聚一堂，也更有悬疑色彩的故事，会觉得。we think an ensemble-like writing approach would be better for us to design some interesting plot lines. So we wanted to give complex multi-narratives a shot. Mr. Shaoji is right on the money here. That's why we've added a new feature in version 2.1. It's called Fates Assemble. In symbol. Besides the Astro Express crew storyline, Trailblaze will also be able to see some stories. Bro, y'all are yapping way too fast, brother. Slow it down. Holy yapping. We'll also be able to see some story experienced by other characters as they progress through the main storyline. Okay. And on the Fate Atlas page, the Trailblazers can also check which, which character's perspective each ongoing and completed mission belongs to. Also, they're increasing the enhancement of keeping up with the story. Minor upgrade, yeah. Everyone got secrets and everyone's got their own agenda. In Pinaconi, anyone could be lying. And the truth slowly unravels as these storylines intersect. It's pretty interesting. Oh, and there is a hidden bonus in 2.0. I swear, bro. These uh, They got to fire this caption artist, bro. Bro is just yapping through bro <laughs> look how fast this caption goes by it's pretty interesting oh and there's a hidden bonus version to add certain note of the story if you decline victories of invitation you'll have a different ending what? then you'll see a cast of crew list filled with question marks as if hinting that everyone's identities were fake but sparkle is still sparkle and that's what you get from always using your real name no wonder she's the most honest person in pinaconi and players actually discovered that on the first day version 2.0 was released holy bro so was it faster than you anticipated yes it was faster than i anticipated bro because we have laid so many of these hooks in version 2.0, like for example, where they use a Firefly's budget, will lead to two entirely different lines of dialogue. And when you encounter Akron in the hotel and the dreamscape and keep refusing, something really incredible might occur. Yes, that's true. It's just amazing to see these moments being uncovered and shared among the players. I will say I do like when they do things like that and you get different little plot lines because then the internet kind of comes together and tries to discover, whoa, what, what answer did you choose and what answer did she give back to that? And generally, there's like a between the lines message, a subliminal message. The whole project team, so the happy part was actually, bro, guys, I, I resigned as the translator, bro. I can't, bro. This is a different level of speed happening, bro. I'm just gonna read. I read much faster in my head. You should clarify. Like they forgot we were here, guys. They forgot. They just they just having a conversation. They don't even know they're doing a live stream anymore. They're just chatting with each other, which I love. I think that's good energy. It comes off as genuine and natural. I remember another title called All the Sad Tales. So we amped up the game, huh? <coughs> kind of fits some parts of 2.1's main storyline. Can't do that. It's the anniversary celebration. So I thought, yeah, you're right. Now let it go. Mission 2.1. Wait, guys. Why didn't y'all tell me I'm hiding part of the captions? Not that you're, you're going to be able to read it as fast. <laughs> Not that y'all are going to be able to read it as fast. Okay, let's do this again. 
手机老师您这个手机没来了吗 嗯，前面的版本PB也放出了许多让大家非常在意的画面，关于这部分内容，我们也在接下来的角色介绍环节再详细讲述吧。非常感谢两位老师的分享，在了解了信息量如此之大的二点一开炮任务之后，我们不如
It can be clearly seen there are many ink-like droplets in her portrait, which makes the colors they touch fade away. But in this black and white world, there's a hint of red from a flower called crimson knot. They bloom around Acheron in this black and white world. The envisioned scene was like Acheron standing alone on a desolate wasteland with the whole world in black and white covered in dark clouds. Then heavy rain pours from the sky and those continuous drizzles are actually black, thick and heavy like ink. They descend upon the earth and color is stripped from all that they strike. Dude, this shit is dope. Leaving only black, white, and gray, a colorless world. But in this colorless world, there will be a drop of pure crimson falling from the sky, and it makes it so much vibrant since it's the only colorful thing. Landing on the tip of Acheron's blade and coloring her whole being in red. Dude, that shit is... Oh, bro, she gotta be the most fire character. With such a vivid atmosphere, we found it perfect for Acheron's character. Everything about her inside and out. Like, why are they going so hard on Acheron, bro? No wonder she's holding the red umbrella now. Do you know what the most na nihilic? I can't even say that word. Nihilistic? Do you know what the most nihilistic? <laughs> Go back. This actually wasn't the most ni nihilistic. That word is twisting me, bro. Nihilistic. Nihilistic design. <laughs> you know what the most nihilistic design is? <laughs> like, it's definitely the version when she uses her ultimate and the whole game crashes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you literally, without any optimizations made, whenever we use Akron's old, the game would crash? <laughs> That's crazy! <laughs> to the shadow realm did she broke the whole damn game <laughs> Acheron was just too performance intensive just click it and boom the game crashes <laughs> yo I love this bro this is such good context for this bro I'm loving this conversation guys they're not yapping they're actually having like this is so great I'm I love I love this freaking dude on the right bro he's great and I like blade too blades going hard Donzi's going hard this is great I remember that at the end of version 2.0 story. Akron took care of Duke Inferno in a seemingly miraculous way. How did she do it exactly? How did she do it? How did she do it? Sent that boy straight to the shadow room. Yo, that's so fire, bro. God damn Hoyoverse presentations, man. Black and white filter on us here. <laughs> what you saw just now was the effect of Acheron's ult, which has a fading visual effect in some scenes and also causes time to freeze. Even Acheron's hair would change from purple to white, and the raindrops were severed by Acheron's attacks with some speed changes made during the attacks, too. Yeah, unfortunately, Donzi, I tried my hardest to, like, preserve my virginity card of seeing her old but the pencil dick nerds on the internet thought it would be appropriate to put it and spam it in every single discord every single social media platform on the goddamn internet to where there was pretty much no avoiding it so i'm sorry i tried but it failed i failed spectacularly Truly the most challenging character we've created so far. No doubt about it. There really is no doubt about it. It really is quite a handful. Her overall abilities exude a sense of desolation and shattering. That's exactly the feeling we wanted. Bro! What the f- God, she's perfect. Oh my gosh, she's perfect. She is every weeb's dream, bro. What'd you say, Rogue? They posted on YouTube and the video had the audacity to say spoilers ahead. Nigga, you already spoiled it. What's the damn <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dead ass, Rogue. Dead ass. I'm glad I'm not the only one that be mauled it, bro. All right, hold on. Hold on. He said spoilers ahead. Hold on, sorry. Bitch got white hair. Red ass outfit. She out here doing the Zompacto. They spoilers. 
I'm sorry, bro. That shit is too funny. Oh my god. That's how these niggas be, bro. It's like, bro, you ain't got you the f the animals, bro. It's bright in here. I bright they're f animals, bro. Oh bro, that was a good ass laugh, bro. <clears throat> Rogue, you may keep that in the video if you like. You damn right! I'm <laughs> The sense of emptiness and loneliness. And when she uses her skill, Octobolt Flash. Bro, that shit is called Octobolt Flash. Even her name for her skill is broken. Holy, she putting Minato to shame. Okay, let's see it. Oh my. God, bro, I haven't seen this yet. Only seen the old brother. She, it was a, it was a whole like linear path, bro. She collected each one of them hoes. Oh my God. Look at, look at, look at the one at the top. Look at the one at the top. Look at the, she going like linear path her way to her, bro. Watch this shit, watch this shit. Hold on, we gotta look at this, bro. 4K HD. <laughs> oh my god, bro! Y'all, they went crazy on this, bro. This is a regular skill? They went crazy on that shit, dog. Holy! Damn, bro. That's the best skill in the game. That is the bet now imagine oh hell no y'all know i gotta say this. imagine saying topaz's skill looks fine after seeing this imagine remember remember when i tried to say that topaz's kit was ash cheek chronicles uh-huh yep yeah. you see you couldn't live with your failures and where did that lead you back to smack Kurt Angle meme. What I say, my see what I was trying to push for? You remember what I was trying to push for? Yeah, I know y'all do. That's a 12 out of 10. That's a 12 out of 10. <coughs> to unleash her real strength. So she can only gain charges by using her skill. Isn't that a little too slow? No, because them debuffs. Whenever any target takes action that inflicts a debuff on the enemies, Akron will gain one charge. The expression any target sounds kind of interesting. Yes. Yes. Yeah, bro, because like it doesn't matter. It's not just like your team. It's it's like debuffs, period, basically. Like so like if a fish like blows up on the stupid ass Armaton gatekeeper, that's gonna count towards an energy like energy recharge towards her ult. She, she didn't have energy. It's not just debuffs from our own side. When enemies inflict debuffs on themselves, Akron can also accumulate charges. Yeah, look, in the bottom left, oh, shit, they, they just said what I said. Now I feel like an idiot. Uh, They just, right here is where you can see her ticks. And you can see at nine, this flower is blooming now. <coughs> you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna do a whole separate video for that, so I'm not, I'm not going to stay. It also includes the debuffs generated when we break a monster's weakness. Yep. And when that chubby ice guy fails to devour his otherlings, it gives him a, de a defense debuff. Yep. Yep. They all count. They all count. What about when the environment causes harm to me, like when I'm nauseated from walking on walls? Bro's waffling. Please forgive me, Mr. T. <laughs> Don't do that again next time. What the fuck? This is... Bro said, please forgive me, Mr. T. <laughs> Bro I didn't say no. He didn't say no. We don't have that. He said. He said, "Come in aside. <laughs> Come in aside. <laughs> don't do that again next time." <laughs> oh my God, dude! The chemistry between these these three are great, dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long as debuff is inflicted on enemy accounts. Holy shit. Akron's ultimate can be activated. And Akron's ultimate is kind of special. It has four hits. Oh. My God. Holy bro. Damn, that shit is fire. They had to, I had to Super Saiyan Goku that bitch, bro. <laughs> Holy shit.
Yeah, we got run that back, bro. It's not the same. It has four parts of attack, and the first part, uh, the player can choose the target target. Ah, can choose the target target. Oh my God, bro. Then, if his attack is hit, he can be immunized. Ah, and the energy has no relation. That shit is wild, brother. Like dog, I'm trying not to pause, guys, but what the? F wow, I mean, wow. Then we don't have to take the trouble. Why bother with that stuff? What, what are they talking about? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, he shouldn't have energy. Yeah, Akron doesn't have any energy gauge at all. That's great. Then we don't have to take the trouble of getting like energy ropes. Bro, y'all gotta stop with this quick, bro. Who's this caption artist? I'm about to fire his ass myself. Then we don't have to take the trouble of getting the link rope with the energy regeneration rate, right? Exactly. Why bother with that stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't need all that. Damn that. Ting Yun, tell her ass get in the back. It's, it's long overdue. You encounter a monster when exploring. Oh, dude. And Akron uses a tech. Okay, I've never seen this. She just sent bro straight to the Shadow Realm. She just sent bro straight to the Shadow Realm. Guys, this changes everything. Now you can explore the world. If you really want a mid max, you can now explore the world and, and clear it all, bro. Gamers, and this changes everything. You can just like straight up pick up a topaz with a with the Acheron and and just straight up just slash everything in the world. Don't even have to go into combat. Except elites, I think. I think it don't work on elites, but you just slash everything in the world and they're out of there, bro. Acheron is literally a quality of life, guys, just like Ron May. Oh my God! I didn't think about the simulated universe. You have a QOL, and now we can do the simulated universe faster. Holy shit! This really changes everything. <laughs> Better get on chat. This actually changes everything. <laughs> Holy shit. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Did I miss something, bro? I'm like crashing out right now, chat. What the? F Let me go back. What do you mean by instant killing? It means you can slay the monster directly without entering a battle. Yes. What about the rewards? Definitely there. If it's that powerful, can I use it in a simulated universe? Like, that's a question. Of course you can. Otherwise, why do we design it to begin with? Yeah, tell him. Tell him, bro. So does that mean I can off a trotter with just a touch? <laughs> bro, this thing is funny as hell, bro. <laughs> uh, commit a sight. <laughs> This is the greatest live stream, bro. I'm enjoying this shit. Uh, it's all to match this character and highlight the thrill of her combat style. When you see a bunch of minions on the map, you can activate her technique continuously in a series of... Oh my god, dude. This bitch is actually breaking the game, bro. What the... Bro, she hit him with the KFC three piece. What the f bro? What is this character, bro? Bro, she is. Oh, guys, I'm dead ass. If Acheron doesn't outsell Sela's banner, I don't know. I don't know. Bro, I, I, I dead ass. If she doesn't outsell Sela's banner, then Hawkeye Star is under uh, overrated, bro. <laughs> I don't know what I'll say, bro. <laughs> There's no way this character will not outsell Sila's banner, right? There's just no way. <laughs> we optimize Akron's technique. Technique points won't be consumed if her technique doesn't hit any enemy with such a powerful... Wow. So they even gave you a QOL on it. That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, but when you find him, he didn't channel. Guys, this is the fastest 22 minute video I've ever reacted to. You must be pretty good at personally. Well, during the design phase, we did face quite a bit of resistance because Akron's technique was indeed too powerful. <laughs> I bet y'all did. She directly eliminates some minions, especially when you're fighting in the SU against the swarm or taking on that Intellitron in the Golden Gears in the beginning. Everyone was thinking, like, these minions are too hard to kill, right? I mean, Akron just wipes them out, just sends them to the Shadow Realm. Some colleagues might think that this could disturb the player's normal gaining experience, but in the end, normal gaming experience. Yeah, no, no, hell no, hell no. What? What do you say? Akron could just wipe them out. So some colleagues might think that this could disturb the player's normal gaming experience. Shut tell them colleagues, get their ass in the back with Chi Chi and Amber, bro. But in the end, after several rounds of discussions, we designed, since we think, we kept it like this. <coughs> it should be usable in various situations and we want players to have a blast in the game. Oh, Gotta have fun where it matters. You're damn right. It's all fun and games. <laughs> After all, bro, these cap this caption guy, I swear I'm gonna strangle this mother. Donzi keeps hitting the great jokes and he just glosses over them. He said, gotta have fun where it matters. Donji said, it's all fun and games after all. Bro, like bars. But speaking of Akron, being an old friend who looks so familiar to us, I actually want to pose a question after talking about her so much. We all know that Akron isn't her real name. Yeah, exactly. We know. Raiden. Raiden May. So is her real name a tongue twister or something that's easy to say? <laughs> I don't think you need to ask in such a roundabout way or beat around the bush like that. We can talk about it openly. Based. In the trailer for version 2.1, there are a lot of scenes that will definitely catch our players' attention, including the scene where there is a girl who looks a lot like Akron, but has horns on her head. Oh, bro, this is a hundred. So, guys, I only played like... Uh, I only played maybe, maybe mm, I want to say about 10 to 15 hours of Honkai Impact the Third. I can already see where this is going. This is 110% going to a Honkai, Honkai Impact of the Third reference. I can already see. And it seems to have a strong connection to Akron's past. Those horns might ring a bell, too, for fans of the Honkai series. Yeah, I knew it. But let me remind you, take a closer look. Those horns are actually different. Oh, what the? F Wait, what? Bro threw me a curveball. He said the horns are different. Meaning it's not this way. What? It was mentioned way back at the start of the game. <coughs> Honkai Star Wars is part of this whole Honkai universe. In the setting, it's in an all-encompassing, full of all kinds of possibilities we can encounter familiar faces in one different world after another. And from that, we can have some little surprises or maybe some heartwarming moments that are all unique to the Honkai IP itself. But fear not, you don't need to feel burdened or pressure. Whether you're a longtime player of the Honkai series or a newer probably, or a new player, yep. When it comes to Akron's character and Pinaconi's story, plus the narrative surprises we've hidden within, will make it easy for everyone to experience the same kind of fun. And if you happen to, for example, have played Honkai Impact III, then you might uncover the little surprises we prepared for you that might make you experience familiarity or nostalgia with a knowing smile. See, so like in and of itself, reading between the lines, it is going to tie back into Honkai Impact III. Even though he didn't say it outright, he pretty much said it outright right there. If you can find a moment of joy or feel moved by the story, why not share your excitement with others? True. It's also something we're happy to see. <coughs> Just like when version 2.0 was launched, we saw people discussing this topic already. That's right, yes. Oh, and I saw Akron eating a peach in her idol animation. Oh, peaches. Are you sure you're asking about whether she eats peaches? Of course, what I really want to know is, can she cook? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get to the real grown man questions. You know, can she throw down in that kitchen? You know what I'm saying? Whether it's about creating characters or developing the story and IP content, what we're essentially doing is giving players what they want to see and presenting it in a more elegant, appropriate, and thoughtful way, namely the best possible way. So when it comes to things, players are in her... She eats ass? Come on, buggy. <laughs> so what exactly is her real name? Can she cook? What's her current state now? <laughs> Even when Akron appeared briefly in the TGA trailer, some people were already really looking forward to seeing her meet Will. Whoa! So her and Welt got some things going on. Hold on, guys. Let me drink some water real quick. <coughs> Whew, the devs are on Reddit. Damn. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> 
fucking throat, man. Jesus. In version 2.1 with more stories to come. So stay tuned for more. In fact, you'll be able to see Akron's storyline in version 2.1, which is a little adventure she embarks on together with Weld. Oh, Honkai Impact fans are going to lose their shit over that. Akron has been a character, <coughs> both in terms of storyline. Through all the experimentation done with her, we've actually explored more possibilities for Honkai Star Rail and set the stage for future content. You could say she has left a significant, groundbreaking impact as one of the main characters in the Pina Cotti story. Yeah, she's breaking the whole game. Not only in version 2.1, but also 2.2 and 2.3, she's going to be holding a significant presence. Blade says a very, very long time to pass year. Let me go back again. Blade said what? What Blade say? God damn it. Akron has truly been with us, the development team, for a very, very long time in the past year. But for players, she's actually a brand new character with many stories to unfold in the future. So in the near future, we will present to you a Myriad Celestia trailer and a character trailer featuring Akron, as well as an animated short. She getting three trailers, boys. Boys and girls. She ain't getting one. She ain't getting two. She getting three trailers. That's crazy. <coughs> a literally mysterious guest has come to share it. Okay. Now please enjoy the teaser. Oh, we got a teaser. Everyone has a past, and the past shapes the present. My gaze has lingered on her for quite Is a while. Is that Black Swan? Tonight, I initiate our first engagement. What was she macking? Let's How be honest. How about a dance? Chat, what's going on here? Chat, what the... What's going on here? Chat, what the... F Hold on, bro. That look like some peanut butter and jelly. They need some bread, though. You know what I'm saying? That's peanut butter and jelly. They need a little bit of bread. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Chad, we can be the bread now. Chad, Chad, listen, listen. We can be the bread. You know what I mean? We can be on, we can be on the outside, all right? <laughs> I'm going to be the bread. I'll be the bread. <laughs> Stand up, smack. No, 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 listen, I'm good. I can't stand up, bro. I'm studying right now. I'm studying. I can't stand up. Excuse me. Are you asking me? You must be eagerly waiting for the full release. Let's all look forward to its official release together. Let's talk about the next character, Aventurine. Yeah, let's talk about goddamn Tartalia's a whole transformation, bro. Bro got a whole transformation. Bro's a Fatui Harbinger. To achieve his goal of cooperating with the Trailblazers? So what kind of person is he exactly? Received a lot of attention. <coughs> In version 2.0 story, he's obviously a bit of a morally gray individual. Though more like a villain at present, he's not necessarily a di indirect conflict with you, but there are interests at play, and he wishes to work with you. Although in 2.0, the Trailblazer hasn't given a formal reply yet, it's evident from the version trailer that beyond Akron, he also plays an important role in the main storyline for 2.1. And this is one of the biggest things, I'll, I'll be honest with y'all, I was really, this is one of my, like, I need to seize in 2.1 because he didn't have much of a presence in 2.0 or like really on screen time as much as I wanted to see. I needed to see him in action in 2.1. It, it was imperative for me. So I'm so glad that he's going to be like very, a very significant character in this. Because <laughs> we go back to his initial design phase, which also occurred almost. First member to be introduced to the whole Honkai Star universe was Topaz. Belongs to the same organization as And as one of the strategic investment departments, but compared to Topaz, his methods and presence are quite different. While Topaz has a bit of kindness in her straightforward approach, Aventurine, on the other hand, shows a kind of unpredictability. You can't quite figure him out, and you can't say he's a complete villain. But he's definitely not a saint either. He seems to be ambling between conscience and conspiracy. But what's more intriguing is 
what sense of self he possesses beneath his flamboyant appearance. It's quite thought-provoking. It's quite apparent that Aventurine has a strong purpose for coming to Pinaconi this time. So you can imagine that in the upcoming plot, he will also be a significant driving force. And his character design clearly shows that he's the type who would do whatever it takes to achieve his goals, even by laying cards that are unimaginable to most people on the table, just to win all the chips in the end. What a, what a beautiful poetic like concept for him, too. Leaving with everything or nothing, that's the most important line. Aventurine's pretty intricately designed. If we just look at his appearance, you'll find that he looks like a typical rich playboy. And that is probably my biggest letdown. He looks like a rich playboy, philanthropist. And bro, it came out incredibly zesty. You know what I mean? I thought he was going to be a player macking on all the women and bro came out zesty as hell. I think I can safely say that the majority of people were caught off guard. You know what I mean? Full, full disclaimer here. I have nothing against gay people. I can't tell you how many gay people get offensive when a straight man sees a playboy philanthropist and is let down that the playboy looking philanthropist isn't macking on all the women. That's not me being like, oh, what do you call it? What, what, what do you call it? What's, what's the word? Oh, a uh, homophobe. That, that has nothing to do with anyone being a homophobe. It means I want to live through Zesterine or Aventurine. Yeah, he dresses up like a flashy princeling. Very exquisite and attentive to his appearance. He wears expensive clothes. And there's some small details like he's concerned about whether his clothes will get wet in the rain. So he feels particularly happy about there being no rain in the dreamscape. <coughs> and that rem reminds me of a certain someone. <laughs> You can probably tell that there's something interesting happening here. It's going to happen. This is something that players will have to explore for themselves in the upcoming story. After all that's been said, to sum it up, Aventurine is someone who's very eager to possess wealth. Everything he does is to, to accumulate wealth, including his extravagant spending habits, which clearly show his almost pathological obsession with wealth. From his perspective, it's so clear to, to know, too, like be anybody who's obsessed with wealth is generally somebody who is incredibly poor, too. Like, so I think it's, it's not rocket science to know that obviously Aventurine and where he came from, which Sparkle did mention, but I can't remember, clearly was a place of poverty, you know? <coughs> so he's a master. He wants to possess wealth <laughs> through daring ventures. And on this note, you can also clearly see that in his visual cues, there are clearly a lot of items related to games of chance like dice and chips. He must excel in probability. When the new version goes live, you may want to take a look at his phone text signature. We've left some interesting details there. Well, maybe for him, life is an endless game of risk, and he seems to enjoy it. Who always wins and always ends up having the last laugh. It's hard to imagine what it's like to be friends with them. You can't even say for sure what friends really mean to him. It's a bit hard to put into words, which makes it even more intriguing in the unfolding story. The relationship between the crew, the Trailblazer, and Aventurine went, to, went by too fast. If I were friends with him, I'd definitely ask him to buy me lottery tickets. <laughs> In the upcoming 2.1, there are lots of options concerning Aventurine. <laughs> Wait, say that again? Uh... I hate that I have to keep having to go back, but they talk, there's a lot, dude, this is some like jam-packed dialogue with honestly a ton of information. That's why I keep having to go back. There are a lot of options concerning Aventurine that will have him give you money directly instead of buying you a lottery ticket. <laughs> now that's what friends are for. So when it comes to the storyline involving Aventurine, players should be special attention to the options. Pay special attention to the options. Please let me have a bunch of friends like that. I can reveal that in 2.1, there will be a lot of scenes like this. You better seize the opportunity. If you missed out 2.0, don't miss out again in 2.1. He's a real risk enthusiast, but he's embarked on the path of preservation. Now that's something interesting. So let's take a sneak peek at how he performs in battle. Here we go. Yep, this guy's going on my free-to-play account, guys, 110%. 
Venturin's biggest feature is his skill, where he can apply a stackable special shield for the entire team. Dude, Venturin, just, just off rip, guys. The fact that bro gives the whole team a, a freaking team-wide shield. Look how fat the shield is with his skill. This is not even his old. Bro, power creep the shit out of Japard, bro. Why he power creep Japard so bad? Yo, bro literally did a Japard ult with his skill. That is insanity, brother. Holy, they, bro, where's the Toy Story meme? Rogue, edit in the Toy Story meme, bro. I don't want to play with you anymore. No! God. When allies have their stackable special shield. And get attacked, it accumulates a charge point called Blind Bet. When Blind Bet reaches a certain amount, eventually follow up attack will be triggered. Guys, at the same time, his follow up attack can once again apply this stackable shield to the team. Oh my fucking god, bro. That is disgusting, bro. <laughs> bro, bro, Zest Reed ain't up. I mean, he ain't fucking around, guys. Yo, this dude is nutty. This man's sustain is actually crazy. I'm serious. <laughs> and his follow up attack can apply shields in return. <laughs> I'm not going to say he's unkillable, it's just so comfortable. <laughs> Some people were saying he's mid. Uh, let me guess. Redditors and uh discord members and uh oh yeah pencil dick nerds who don't actually understand anything <laughs> oh uh, 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 honey hunter uh comment section it grants some random blind bet points and deals damage so let me go back and deals damage to a single enemy target and his ultimate can also inflict a debuff on the enemy what the f his ult inflicts a debuff bro synergizes with Acheron I didn't expect that so he synergizes with follow up units and with Acheron and with Yang King bro synergizes with a number of people Nah, bro. Crit damage buff? Yo. I mean, what the f bro, that's crazy. I gotta I gotta see. Okay, I'm not gonna right now, you know when you first receive that initial wave of information. It sounds broken on the surface. I need I need to see the I need to see the percentages. This does sound crazy, I'll be honest with you. All this shit sounds wild. But I need to see the percentages. Too many times have they have they led me astray, normally with four star characters. Uh, but they sound good on the surface and then you get them in the game and it's like not as good as you think. I, I wonder what the percentages are looking like. This does sound insane though. What is this? Bro's gambling on my technique. What the f is going on? Bro, bro used up all the technique points. <laughs> defense boosts of varying strength. Oh, so he hits. So you got a your gambling defense boost. That's crazy. Wait a minute, bro. So bro's a defense. Bro gives the whole team defense boost. Wow, fellas, fellas, this is a foreshadowing of a dps who scales off of defense this is a foreshadowing of a future dps who is going to be scaling off a of defense i guarantee it i guarantee it bro <laughs> To smash those monsters, rain them on me instead. <laughs> rain them. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Let me get some of that money, bro. Like these.
start millionaires, bro. Well, this, this, and it was a good joke, but you ain't fooling your boy, bro. All right, I know y'all, y'all over there swimming in money. Small indie company, guys. Small indie company. <laughs> Wanted to convey more of his fan fantasism. He must be insanely good. That's right. So now there's a corresponding design for him. Didn't include the element of a roulette wheel. But later on, we wanted to take the concept of probability games to the extreme, so we added the visual element of the roulette wheel. Okay, I keep leaning over here. Let me turn this over just a little bit more. I always have some pretty wild ideas about every character at the beginning. There would be so many crazy things. There was another design for Venturine early on, and his initial keyword was dodge, because dodging itself is an event with a certain probability. True! And it also represents as a present. Dude, come on! Caption, man, bro! Dog! I need you to simmer, bro! Holy bro thinks I have Acheron's time stop. I actually do. I can just pause. And his initial keyword was dodge. Because dodging itself is an event with a certain probability and it also represents a certain risk. True. As a preservation character specializing in dodging, he can attract all enemy firepower and unleash it on himself. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, bro. Ain't no way, child. Nah, we gotta wind that back, bro. Zeke, what the fuck? Hey, Zeke, bro, love you, baby. Hope all is well. Oh my God, shout out Zeke, chat. Oh my God, that's my brother, man. It also represents a certain risk as a preservation character. He can attract all enemy firepower and unleash it on himself. <laughs> Unscathed with a low HP by dodging. Taking small risk for a big reward. That honestly, all, all pause aside, all zestiness aside, <laughs> That actually sounds insane. I think that was a beautiful kit. I actually would have loved that kit too. Man, bro, I love their ideas, bro. True geniuses. <laughs> where, he would have a, where he would have a pot that would mushroom every time he successfully dodges an attack. Bro, we got to chill, bro. Listen, guys, y'all got to chill on this shit, bro. Holy. Even eventually reaching a max like 777 or 999, once he takes some damage during his process, the number directly gets halved and the money goes flying away. I can actually picture it. it feels like it would be really fun to implement it. It would have. These are great ideas. These are great ideas. I would love to have a conversation with these guys. I can't stress to you guys enough. I love their conversation because it's so seamless, natural, and genuine. It doesn't feel like they're trying to like... Like, guys, it doesn't seem like they're trying to, you know, PR us. They're 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 boys for real for real. These guys are cool. Like they're they're actual friends having a conversation about the game. I I love this shit, bro. It doesn't uh, come off as fake or like they're trying to put on a you know uh, a facade of sorts. It's kinds of monsters in Honkai Star Rail. Who can launch or random attacks? So as a preservation character specialized in dodging, he can indeed protect himself really well, but not so much for the others. Honestly, it actually fits his personality. <laughs> but it's only an appearance. I suddenly have this thought. If he's a boss that we have to face, and he can dodge, wouldn't it be really hard to defeat him? Oh my god, that'd be so annoying. You have an L on head. Guys, nothing's more annoying in a turn-based game, especially Pokemon, bro. When you get hit with a goddamn, uh, what is it, a, a, a blind. When you get hit with blind, Sand Shrew hits you with a with the accuracy low, and you keep missing your attacks. That is the most annoying thing in a turn based game. <laughs> Zeke, you know that sand attack smoke screen. Oh my god, bro! Like literally, if I have a bar, if I have a bar that's like anger meter, tilt meter, that shit gets filled halfway when that happens, bro. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Timo, Ben Timo, every game. <laughs> yeah, Timo. <laughs> 
我们就讲一下。I'm getting Timo, man. 那 boss 能做闪避吗？也不行啊。Ultimate troll character. 闪避这个东西放到一个怪物身上，可能就是一个蠢蠢的。Be a sheer nightmare. 问题嘛，你想象一下，对我一个满拐。I got this Azir's Aqua at Blutes all with all buffs, and it ends up being dodged. 无敌，然后 He's invincible, and our hits always miss. But you did touch on a point that well, that's where you would solve that problem with the solution, uh, mechanically wise on your team, like make bring out the value of certain characters to get rid of that. Showdown with the Trailblazer, brother! Oh my God, dude, bro, that's a Fatui Harbinger, guys. Like, come on, bro. Bro literally needs to have a seat at the table of the Fatui Harbingers. Dead ass. Like, come on, man. That is actually a Fatui Harbinger. What the f And it's so drippy. I love the mask. The mask? Zeke, you're a Persona fan. Is that mask not truly inspired by Persona, man? You know? Um... I can't think of another game. Oh, uh, you know what? Where have I seen that mask anime wise? Yo, straight up arson. That's what I'm saying. Like, he went full peacock. <laughs> He's activating the foul zest transformation. <laughs> Where else have I seen that mask from? I feel like it was it. Uh, is it Fire Force? Is it Fire Force? I've seen this like kind of mask somewhere else. I just can't think of it. Ah, that's gonna bother me. It doesn't matter. This shit is fire, though. 会看到这么一名就是 boss 怪物，呃，他的名字叫石心食人诡异杀精，也可以。And we can also see that his appearance is quite different from the regular Aventurian. So why does Aventurian present himself like that? Bleach! It is bleach, isn't it? It is bleach. You're right. Holy! That's why it was bothering me so bad. 进行一场。<laughs> How does the result of this match turn out? All of these will be explained in the storyline of version 2.1. So please stay tuned. Why do, I, why do I feel like we're always fighting our good friends? He really won't dodge, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Please. Please, keep that out. We guys, this is the smoothest hour I've ever reacted to any... any Video. Like, this is such a, a fun live stream, bro. Oh my god, we're only 38 minutes in. I gotta stop pausing. He occasionally leaves a torrent of chips to attack the players. Meanwhile, he'll engage you in, a, in an in, in an in combat game, kind of like Blackjack. Because after all, he's a master of probability. Bro, this this fight is so freaking cool and so fitting to Pina Coney. It makes me want to go to Vegas. This shit makes me want to go to Vegas. You win the game. You win the game. You win the game. Imagine trying to zero cycle this. Hey, yo, Lucky, you read, you read my mind. Good luck, Zeke. I said, imagine trying to zero cycle. Yo, Zeke, take care, baby. Love you, bro. Um, yeah, dude, imagine trying to zero cycle this shit. Of当然，如果你的点数比沙丁小的话呢，啊，沙丁就会用筹码与揍我们一顿了。所以呢，就是说我们要在一次攻击中尽可能的攻击更多的投资啊，让我们的点数呢可以有更高的概率去与沙
Gallagher's you know, the only designated you know, ordinary you know, villager in Pina County's Mafia you know, game. You won't even find him. I, bro, bro, I cannot believe I actually called this man's entire lore before he even came out. And I, I swear to God, stripe down, like, I don't even look at story leaks. If you go back and watch my freaking uh, the drip marketing reveal, I literally said, bro's gonna be, uh, it'd be so cool if he was part of a mafia. The bartender who's part of the mafia, who knows everybody. Pina Coney's mafia game. That's so crazy. <laughs> you won't even find him in any analysis for mafia. That's exactly the kind of character I wanted him to be, bro. Oh, that's so cool. The most typical of Pina County locals. As a security officer of the Bloodhound family, he diligently carries out his duties. There's nothing suspicious about him. Even his appearance. I, I don't think y'all understand. I literally 10 out of 10 called this man's character, bro. Blinding me with their glitz and glamour. Gallagher is simple, modest, and reassuring. I think he's well. I even talked about it on Tech's podcast. How do I put it? He's a character, both Pinnacone and the family embodying the atmosphere of harmony at the Charmony Festival. He's also a drink smith. He was proficient at mixing sodas. Like Sweet Dream Special and such. He also carries around drinks with pain relieving properties. He's well acquainted with all the Pina Connets. I don't like where this is going. I want him to throw hands. You can see people discussing a security on the open streets and in the dark alleys. In unexpected corners. He's everywhere at once. Guarding the peace of the alley. Hold up. They they making this man seem a little too broken. He's everywhere at once. Wise bro, wise bro giving off the watchmaker vibes, bro. Bro might be the watchmaker. Much like a hero with the uh, an anonymity. I hate that word. It's anonymous, but it's anonymity. Actually, we wanted to go for a different type of wheat base. What kind of wheat? Not the bell box stuff, right? She's a drink. Watchmaker as a four star? I mean, they totally would do some shit like that, to be fair. Even his Eidolon's names are that of cocktails. But because he's from Pina Coney, he wanted to include some local flavor. So we thought of this middle aged, well seasoned man who looks like he's been through a lot in life. <laughs> Bro, look, he got cooked. That's how I cooked his ass in that drip marketing. I said, bro, look like Shanks who never left the bar and kept drinking. <laughs> bro, look like Squall after the war, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Before pulling out of a can or something. <laughs> Yo, Bagheera, thank you. And it gives off both. Bro got a tiger from Aladdin name? Now, we've talked a lot about Gallagher's identity, but his most obvious identity is still the security officer of the Bloodhound family. So, as a loyal hound, naturally, he plays the role of protecting the safety of foreign guests in the story. Bloodhound family protecting guest safety. But in the version 2.0 story, did he even protect anything at all? <laughs> well, you don't understand. The upcoming 2.1 storyline, Gallagher will play an important detective role. Co copium, copium, and travel with the crew. That's copium, brother. To uncover the mysterious of Pina Coney. Mysteries. How do you know that his actions wasn't based on his own considerations and tips? Nah, bro, that's copium, bro. That's copium. See if they're reliable. You can't just jump to conclusions right off the bat. Nah, yes, I can. And in battle, Gallagher also has some special effects to protect the team. He looks like a fighter, right? So his ultimate isn't about healing. Ooh. Bro got a claw? Yo, that was fire. Champagne etiquette. Uh, etiquette, I mean. Yo, that's so fire. That's a that's a cool ass name too. Champagne etiquette. Wait. Is that etiquette or etiquette? Etiquette or because then, you know, there's like proper etiquette when you're talking, right? But then there's, is, is, is that etiquette as in like proper etiquette? Etiquette. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
It'll put all enemies. Attack the target with that special debuff. Tipsy Tussle. That's a cool ass name. <laughs> Tipsy Tussle. Oh, that was a juicy amount of HP, man. Attack the target with that special debuff. They can recover HP. Look at Pella's HP. The the captures were in the way. That was some. That was cool. We actually try to stay true to the character's persona and background. After all, he's a fire type character of abundance, you know? So we were thinking a fire type abundance character who looks like he's already always ready to throw hands instead of. <gasps> bro said throw hands! I like Donzi, bro. Donzi's my guy. Donzi is my guy, bro. That's right, throw hands. Bro actually said throw hands, chat. That's crazy. <laughs> Who looks like he's always ready to throw hands instead of bullshit. <laughs> Catch these hands real quick, you know what I'm talking about? So we thought about how you can heal allies. Healing spells or wound bandaging. None of that really fits his personality. So why not lean? Have a sip of soul glad. I noticed that when he unleashed his ultimate, there are some cracks and wounds on his hands underneath his gauntlet, and they emit bursts of energy. <laughs> Gives off feeling of a wheat based drink. His ultimate can also enhance his next basic attack. That's what I was looking forward to seeing. Not only dealing more powerful damage to enemies, but also reducing the target's attack. Oh, so making you, making you take here. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting. Those claws are fire. I wish I'm not. I'm not crazy about that enhanced basic attack. That's a four star ass uh, feel to it for sure. Yeah, it's got a four star feel to it, unfortunately. It's not bad, but it's uh, it's definitely a four star animation. I was hoping that Enhance felt a little better than that. Or not felt, looked a little better than that. Uh, for me, it's underwhelming, me personally. <laughs> Is there anything else? It's Shu Yi's basic attack? Nah, bro, Shu Yi's looks better. And even in, it doesn't even matter because Shu Yi's basic attack isn't even the, the premise of her kit. It's not even the foundation of her kit. Not, you, don't, you don't ever have to use her basic attack, so it doesn't even matter. His is actually uh, an imperative like move of his kit. It revolves around that. <laughs> what well, sincerely secret of them. <laughs> now that we've learned about the three characters, let's take a look at the characters in light cones with boosted drop rates and versions. Uh oh, here we go. Whoa. Uh. Gallagher, Pella, and Danny Boy. Dan Hung. Ugh, gross. Pella is an incredibly valuable four star. All free to play players definitely are going to take a W there. And you have the new character coming along with her. Good banner. What do we got over here? Good night and sleep well. One of the best um, abundance light cones because of the energy recharge. And then that dog shit ass hunt path light cone. So the two bricks are the dog shit hunt path light cone and Dan Hung. But good night and sleep well. And the uh, the abundance light cone is actually pretty solid. Pella and Gallagher. This is a good banner. It's not bad. It's not bad. Dan Hung, base form Dan Hung's a brick 110%. Okay. Okay. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. 
Lynx, Luca, and Serval. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know about all that. And I y'all know I love me some Luca, but like Luca, if he, like you gotta really be a cultured individual to know what you're doing with Luca. Like Luca is my boy at all, but yeah, that that banner, booty cheek chronicles, bro. I ain't gonna cap. And then you got Serval's Light Cone. I will say, I wish I had more copies of Serval's Light Cone. And then you have that other one that gives you energy back. And then what the hell is that Light Cone? That must be a new one. I've never seen that. You got a young ass Sunday. Sunday looking. Is that Sunday? Sunday and Robin, it looks like. Yeah, this, this Light Cone banner looking a little mid. I ain't gonna cap. Which is so unfortunate, guys, because on my free-to-play account, I'm going for Aventurine. <laughs> but I do play with Serval. You know what? I play with Serval on my free-to-play account. She's, she's my lightning DPS, so I'll take this. I'll take this, and I, I don't have an E6 Lynx yet, so I'll take that. That's a brick. I'm kind of coping, but you know what? It is what it is. Lynx better than Gallagher? Bro, he's not even out yet, dipshit. What, the, what are you waffling about? All right, let's go ahead and continue. That's with Acheron? Though they butcher, they butcher Lorcha. Bah. Why you insult the poor man? Bro, it's not that deep. Uh, Lorcha on Acheron's banner is... Is unfortunate. <laughs> Lorch ain't getting no Lorch ain't getting no banner sales, guys. Holy. Good, good, good sustain. But bro's getting put in the back 110% with Amber. No doubt about it. Bro's in the back with Arlon on this one, unfortunately. He's ass? No, he's not. He's just he's just been outscaled by other sustainers, and now he's 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 in the banner. With literally the most broken character in the game. Wow. Wow. Now this might have butchered Aventurine cells. Holy shit. That was dirty. Oh my god, dude. That's dirty. Jingly, you with Aventurine? <laughs> holy that's dirty guys oh my god so Eve, regardless of if you're skipping aventurine you're gonna be enticed to pull on jing liu as a free to play as a newer player you are absolutely not gonna want to skip this character bro Ooh, yikes oh man dude Duh, i gotta be honest with you honkai star Rail, bro these banners are painful man oh dude that's painful as shit to look at Ugh, it's rough it's rough out here grandpa smack is jingly worth the pools bro what <laughs> yes jingly you it, it don't matter who come out jingly you is is in her own lane bro like it, it, she's in her own lane it doesn't matter if acheron comes out it doesn't matter who else comes out jingly who's in her own lane guys i'll be honest with you <laughs> a DPS you can always count on, essentially. Oh, so that is a new four star like con. It's Sunday and Robin in their childhood. The big brother. Such a heartwarming scene. All right, let's take a break for now. There's some exciting version 2.1 events coming up. Move cam. Oh, shit. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. Appreciate you. Good thing I looked over. <coughs> all right. Another code. Hey, guys, at the end of this reaction, please send me all the codes so I don't forget. Okay. Oh, we got two people. Two people. What are they going to talk about? Events? Hey, 
Keep it a buck with me, guys. Do we need? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. I was about to be lazy and skip the shit. We'll watch it. Events always go to my brain as I don't need to know about that right now. But you know what? Let's see what they got going on. Welcome to Clock Studios HQ. What in the Looney Tunes? Clocky's trusty sidekick, Hamster Ball Night. So today, let me, the most commercially valuable spheroid racer in the history of Penacony, show you the brand spanking new area that's about to open. Sure you don't want to skip? Go, 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 go. <laughs> Located in Penacony's golden hour. Let's put it in 2X. Let's put this part in 2X. Somebody, somebody had a good point. Or, 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 uh, 1.75. Studio theme park is centered around the beloved anime. Holy yapping! And yes, that means me, the hamster ball night as well. What's that? You're saying there are other amusement parks out there with rodent characters? This hamster knows nothing about that. The park is split into three themed zones. Clocky screening area, hamster ball park. This is actually a pretty good pace. pace. At hamster ball park, you'll find all the tools needed to create your own animation. <laughs> this pace ain't got shit on them captions, bro. Them captions pace. Producer, where you'll film a clocky spin off. Holy yapping. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pokey Yapping Speed. Tanu Gang Base, where you'll have a chance to produce a spin off called The Way of Wolf. Also, Clock Studio Theme Park features an underground prop warehouse, garden, and various other settings for guests to discover. Aside from that, there's also a new section ready to make. Oh, they got roller coasters and shit. Damn. Go, go, go. Still like Pavilion, located in the moment of morning too, serves as the headquarters of the Oak family belongs to Mr. Sunday. What's that? You're asking what good stuff Mr. Sunday has stashed away. Oh, yes. Bro is yapping for real, chat. Now we're adding two new areas. There's also a new ascension material for prototype characters called Raging Heart, along with the Path of Preservation Scattered Stardust Trace material and the Path of Abundance. New materials with new characters, of course. And that's all for today, folks. This hamster's off to snag some nuts. See you in the park. And don't forget Hester Ball Night's motto. Go, 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 go. Holy, okay. All right, we can go back to normal. Looks like our version 2.1 story will primarily take place in the two new locations. Clock Studios. Yeah, that's right. These two new areas are based on Pina Cost. Snack those nuts. Did he say that shit? I missed it. <laughs> Apart from the Soul Glad culture, we also make space for many other cultures in Pinacote. That's why we've integrated elements of movies, amusement parks, and even a touch. Let's create the fun-filled map of Clock Studios theme park. With such a map, the gameplay is bound to be diverse. So what kind of gameplay experiences can we expect? Can you give us a brief introduction? No problem. Clock Studios theme park is a unique blend of a film and entertainment park, which also serves as a shooting location for many famous productions building upon the concept of filmmaking that the hamster ball night mentioned earlier players can engage in the movie bro this looks like this is like nostalgic as shit little mini game like i was gonna say sonic but not really do like pavilion is a significant location for the oak family in terms of gameplay we've designed it as a meticulously crafted puzzle box filled with various gameplay elements <laughs> So this is generally the stuff we're going to do when we're trying to get, like, Star Jades, essentially, right? After you get done with the story, after you get done off your, like, your honeymoon phase of the new character release, now you're going to go in and you're going to do all this stuff, which I generally am really bad at doing immediately. I procrastinate the shit out of it. But that's just my personal preference, you know? A lot of people do look at this as a highlight for their gameplay experience, and I'm not trying to in any way, shape, or form undermine that. I just just personally don't give a damn about it honestly i only do it for that that self-modeling resin and obviously the you know the materials it's just it's just not something that my gaming heart looks towards doing you know this is the the mario party experience that i'd rather just play mario party for but they wrote my ass in with these incentives these monsters were originally created by the family usually doing when i feel like it yeah i mean you know, everybody's different you know there are a shit ton of casuals that love this though like they're like oh my god this this looks fun whereas with me i'm 
like, yeah, I, I play that with my daughter and my girl on my on my Nintendo Switch or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Decided to take a different path. From a family of performers. Monster Lounge. I'll be honest, guys. I don't really, I don't really care about this part. I'm trying to make sure I don't skip over anything important, but it looks like they're not talking about anything in particular. Tides of War. Okay. <laughs> What's the full name of the lightning lord? Lightning wielding thunder clapping, spirit squashing lord. <laughs> Sweating bullets, though the name may be a tad complicated. The battles themselves are pretty straightforward. Players can rack up by leveling up their grit phase step by step. I missed the four star selector. Damn, they didn't even show it in here, huh? What's the four star selector? See it? Ton of units? Fucking hell. The one time I skip, there's a four star. The one time that I decide to skip, it's it's some important shit. God damn it. I listen to this yapping, bro. It's not even showing down here, man. You don't skip on Honkai Star Rail live streams? The fuck I don't. I skip my ass off, bro. Y'all don't skip. I skip. Yeah. Hey. That. I'm skipping. <laughs> I'm skipping. Alright, let's go ahead. We skipping the shit out of that. And to the future people who complain about this on YouTube, cry me a river. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Players a taste of that in a unique Honkai Star real fashion. Besides the fun events, version also brings some updates to the simulated universe and op opens up World 9. And use immersion devices to redeem the two new plan R ornaments, Sig Sigonia, the unclaimed, and I can't even pronounce that. All right, two new plan R ornaments. Massive. Are y'all going to explain them? So we get a news. No. God damn it. That's so annoying. A brief explanation, yeah, that's that vague ass explanation, yeah. A QOL for assignments? Increase the inventory limit. I've never in my life reached an inventory limit, bro. What the holy hoarders? Holy hoarders. yeah, I'm keeping the stack, guys. I don't care about these events. All right, what are we talking about next? It's funny, other other creators be scared to like skip shit. I don't give a. I want to watch the things I'm interested in. I'm interested in.
This is also the beauty of watching things later. Actually, if I remember correctly, the development of Pinacani started around October or November 2022. Damn, nice. Man, that's so fascinating how they reveal that little tidbit of lore. See, this is the type of stuff I'll watch. I love this. I don't care about no damn mini events. That just appeared recently. But for us, we've actually been focusing on it throughout 2023. <laughs> when we look back at that time, the early settings, and long unused concept art, um, sorry. Uh, the four star selector is Gallagher, Misha, Gwen Ifen, Shu Yi, Hanya, Luca, Lynx, or Wukong. Wukong. You trolling, bro? You out here trolling? Wait, Shu Yi? Shu Yi's in the four star selector? Holy, that's crazy. <laughs> bro said Wukong? I picked Wukong too. The bro's in the four star selector. <laughs> That's actually insane that they put Shu Yi in the four star selector. Wow. That's a that's a power move, bro. I'm so excited about that. Actually transform the dreams edge into a okay. Yeah, brother, you happen. My ADHD just went off into another, into the another realm. Everyone initiated from their own starting point, and at some point, our ideas converged and we built upon each other's thoughts to create something together. We started with a concept for the maps and an outline of the story and watched it take shape as a framework. Wukong is not an emanator? Yeah, bro, he's a god himself. He doesn't need to be an emanator. I know you're a trolling, but <laughs> of course he's not an emanator, bro. It's the real deal. He is he is he is him, bro. <laughs> and magnificent. Ultimately transforming into the Pinganani we have now. This journey filled with memory, satisfaction, and joy. I believe that if two years ago he'd probably get off screen by Akron. Are you trying to get timed out? Are you trying to get timed out, bro? Is that what we're trying to do here? Are you really want you really want to die? Do you really want to die on this hill? <笑>唐充满了期待和憧憬的感觉。所谓的旅途都是一步一个脚印，走起来的。英国也是一块块整木堆叠起来的。就像开拓者们的旅途一样，我们这个开发其实也是一个慢慢往前的旅途。那么在
和你的虚构叙事的一些数据啊，这些。It's all crystal clear on that chart. 特别的清楚。哦，这个表。Where would you post this chart? 东西每个版本都会更新一次，然后更新时。Every update, we repost it with the line "Savoring in my place." Fuck, that went over my head, bro. So, so everyone's savoring each other's game progress. Yeah, savoring our accounts. Speaking of which, ever come? Man, they did a joke and it went over my head, bro. I'm pissed. Oh, I've been keeping up with every joke, bro. Let me tell you, in one version, I saw this one staff member with an average daily trailblaze power consumption of over 700. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> My mind was blown when I saw that. Over 700? How did he manage that? I mean, it makes you wonder. I mean, it makes you wonder what he's up to during work hours. <laughs> Yo, bro, about to get fired on in 4K HD, bro. Bro, about to get fired in 4K. <laughs> Mr. Pogi, yeah, exactly. Max refreshing, bro. Talk about relatable. Sounds like he doesn't have need to give him way more work later. Anything else interesting to share? Where actually I can share something with everyone here, the clock future. Which everyone probably has already experienced in version 2.0. When we were developing it, our intention was that we've come to Pinaconi and arrived at the Golden Hour. That in itself is a grand city and stage. We wanted to motivate players to explore more in this big city. And we wanted everyone to immerse themselves. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Everyone in the court in the corporate America, they like to think that they're doing work, but in reality, they're just playing games in their cubicle. And then when their when their friends and coworkers come by, they immediately switch over to the next thing. We eventually came up with a solution, which involves loads of work. Ultimately, we gave all the permanent NPCs in the city, not just in the city. But the whole dreamscape and all the maps, four different emotions. Bro, they're talking too fast, bro. Holy fuck, bro, these captions. Four sets. <laughs> Every time I start to read, it switches. Oh, are they talking about the struggles of voice acting with what they're doing? A creative idea that requires a lot of voice acting work? As you can, that's why most of our NPCs have a sad expression when they give us things. <laughs> Might reflect the genuine and heartfelt emotions of the voice actor. Of some of our staff. <laughs> Dude, they were reading so fast, but I was able to keep up with it for the most part. <laughs> Holy shit, that's hilarious. The workload for this project was actually enormous, possibly even beyond our imagination. So guys, TLDR, I think they were basically saying like they pretty much had these ideas where they would like have like, I, don't, I, I, I didn't really keep up with it entirely, but the premise of it was essentially like in game, they drunk some soul glad and it allowed like the NPC to have completely different personalities, like happy, sad, uh, angry or whatever. And the VA who's working that particular NPC has to literally voice those different, uh, you know, feelings and emotions, which makes them work incredibly hard. But after the version went live and we saw how players are truly finding joy and some positive feedback when interacting with NPCs in the main city and adjusting their emotions, it was all worth it. I'm guessing that's what you're going to get up. It was a source of great happiness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes you go above and beyond and then you realize, like you start to feel like in that particular moment, like, damn, I shouldn't have went that hard. But then you hear the feedback and you're like, you know what? That was worth it. <laughs> Jokes aside, it felt right to make such an innovative decision back then. In the next world, even though it may not be clockwork, but we'll probably also find something fresh that belongs exclusively to it. We all have to go terrorize some other departments for this stuff and see what new ideas they can bring to the table. Now that we've learned so many behind the scenes stories, we've also been paying attention to the questions raised by Trailblazer. See guys, I can listen to this type of shit all day. I don't mind this. This is good. I actually enjoy this from a, from a consuming experience. This is that mini game shit. I, my brain could not give a Less. So today we'll take the opportunity to ask you these questions and maybe tease you a bit. However, to ensure the authenticity of the answer to these questions, we've also prepared some props for you. What kind of props? Well, about this section, we've actually been... We've been keeping this from you. We've prepared heart rate monitors for everyone. What? Please clip them onto your fingers. <laughs> Here I go. 
。喂，我我手指会被夹断吗？不会。What？ <笑> The brother, but it might do. Wait, 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 what do you say? <laughs> but it might do that if you lie. I feel like my heart rate is already over 120. <laughs> it just released the character card a couple of days ago. Well, then I should wear it like this. Put them on. Let's get ready to begin. I can already see everyone's heart rates. Now on to the first question. He put our. He put them with heart rate monitors. He about to ask them the community questions. <laughs> Yo, this is great, bro. Oh my god, dude, dude. Hoyo, Hoyo, Honkai Star Rail team. Genshin could never, bro. Genshin could never. Envy went silent. Oh my. No comment, bro. All right. Farming planar ornaments in the simulated universe is such a pain. No shot. They asked him this. No shot. They asked him the question. I have been literally talking about every goddamn month. Damn near farming planar ornaments in the simulated universe. Such pain. Will it be optimized? Oh my god! That is an actual question from me, bro, and our community. Wow, unbelievably based. I'm speechless. Unbelievably, a real question? You mean to tell me that their PR team didn't get together and tell this guy to ask them a question no one gives a f about? Genshin could never. That's all I gotta say about it. Now, what are they gonna respond to this? I was already given a brief introduction about this earlier. Since it's being asked, then I can reveal a bit more. Don't just keep staring at the heart rate. <laughs> we do think that the current process of grinding in the simulated universe is a bit difficult. I'll say, it's I I, I wouldn't say difficult, mundane. Yeah, yeah, tedious. Yeah. I mean, you did you did just sell us a solution with Acheron, but you know, let let's get one that's that everyone can afford in the game, huh? How about that? And quite cumbersome. Yeah. We plan to optimize the future so people can quickly obtain plan our ornaments. It's already a plan in place, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How soon are we fucking talking? Are they actually? Wait, what? What? They're actually doing it? They're actually doing it? Yeah, pick doesn't mean much. <laughs> wait, wait, did he say it? No, 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 I missed it. I missed it. What the fuck? It's a bit difficult. And quite cumbersome. So inver oh, in version 2.3. Wait, bro, it's 2.0. Man, that's three whole ass patches, bro. Yeah, well, better than nothing. Yeah. Hey, but Gitchin would have been like, well, we don't want to get y'all's hopes up. We, well, it's not in the budget. <laughs> well, you know, it's not in the budget, but to to make up for this, we'll be compensating you with exactly three Primo gems that expires in two seconds. <laughs> we plan to optimize the future so people can quickly obtain planar ornaments. <laughs> well, this, this question I picked doesn't mean much then. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next question. When will March 7th transform? Bro, what the? F Bro, they're getting in the soup. Good question. Hey, this is another one I brought up. You can tell, like, bro, look at bro's face. Look at bro's heart rate definitely is rising, bro. <laughs> this man with real question. Look at bro's face, bro. This question is easy to answer. I got that to hide. As a member of the crew, I'm not kidding. This, this is my favorite Hoyoverse member. I love this guy, bro. As a member of the crew and also the mascot of this game, March 7th has always been the center of attention. Her background seems to suggest that there's a lot of hidden secrets. And a huge story related. While we might think it's okay to drag out this process, people are waiting and anticipating. For players who love March 7th, there might be some good news as of now. Remember that we have a system in the game that is exclusive to the Trailblazer? What? No shot. They're giving her a different path. What? Honkai Star Rail has always been making new attempts and explorations in the RPG genre. We believe that the members of the crew are a very special presence in this game. 
Carl. Oh, what the f- so in 2024, we plan to try this new thing. That is, for March 7th, she will have a system similar to switching paths that is unique to her. It might not be walking on a new path, but rather creating memories. For this girl who doesn't know where she came from, she's creating her own memories in different places and gaining strength through these memories. So she's she's gonna unlock enough memories to to achieve her final form, bro. So let's look forward to the day when the memories she created in the past are all gonna come together, and then she's gonna unlock her true potential, can propel her into a brand new future. He essentially just told us that after enough lore drops in the story with March 7th, she's eventually going to put them all together, bro, like a puzzle. And then she's going to transform. That's insane. That was, wow. Guys, they're answering these on the spot. Are they? It's hard to tell. If they aren't, that is supreme immaculate acting. They, they got me fooled. If they're, if they're like, if they're planning this shit and they're like, what do y'all think, guys? Pre-watched? Fellas, pre-watched or what? <laughs> y'all think they pre-watched or they're actually getting put on the spot? Real questions and real answers? Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's scripted. <laughs> I think it's planned. <laughs> Why would they lie? Not pre-watched? I don't know, man. I don't know. Definitely pre-watched. I can't tell because it's a different culture. Pre-watched boy would have double the heart rate otherwise. It's a work. Listen, man, they might be based enough. They might be based enough. Chat, y'all are so like, <laughs> I can't even blame y'all. I can't even blame y'all. You know, how can we trust anybody, right? Like, I, I feel you. I feel you. I, I, I completely understand y'all's pessimism. I'm actually, I'm in between pessimism and optimism here. <laughs> We're always paying attention to them. <laughs> I think the question should be When will Xian Shou's storyline continue? When will we ever see Ting Yun again? Fellas, I'm not kidding. You can't make this shit up. They are literally answering every question that we've raised in our community. This is so unbelievably based and so Genshin could never, it's not even funny i'm dead ass guys like i don't give a damn how successful genshin impact is i don't care how how far that game uh longevity continues this is a good development team this team actually does listen to its community on both sides of the goddamn hemisphere like no this is so lit bro whereas the, these other people just continue getting ignored it's not even like i'm not even throwing shots i'm just being honest like bro this is so awesome they're answering shit we have had literal discuss the content creators we've had discussions about we brought up they're answering it. That's so cool, man. <笑>这是一个很好的问题你换个吗呃不太能毕竟他们都想知道对吧要不要不你来回答听音不是你设计的吗嗯那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那你那
you know it's crazy it's it's hard for me to like really convey it the way i want to convey it on the spot right now but that's i don't i want to make sure i don't like uh undermine that detail that they just brought up it's huge <coughs> After we arrived at Pinaconi, it basically adds a more immersiveness to the story. As well as their lives and destinies will continue to move, so will the story of Zian Show have new developments? In fact, within this year, in 2024, you will see some outcomes there. This also answers the second part of this question, which is about the whereabouts of Ting Yun. As everyone can see, something happened to Ting Yun in version 1.2, and that plot became a turning point for the destinies of many characters in Zian Shou. So how will the Zian Shou Alliance view the Fantilia crisis after the event has concluded? What kind of future will the Luofu embark upon? And how will the conflict between the hunt and abundance continue to write new chapters in their ancient feud? I think it's time for these stories, holy yapping, bro, to move towards their next phase this year. Bro didn't really answer anything. <laughs> bro, I ain't gonna cap. He did, he did answer it, but he didn't answer it, you know? But he basically said it's coming. He said it's coming around the corner. But I guess it counts as a positive response. There's nothing else I can share. I feel him. That is safe to reveal. I feel him. He doesn't want to spoil at the same time, you know? <laughs> Will there be more cute life forms like Ron May's creations? All right. Y'all was doing good. Y'all was doing good on the questions until we got to this shit right here, bro. Who the f asked this, bro? No one asked, honestly. You would think no one asked, but don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. I guarantee you a lot. Hey, do you remember Twitter? You remember Twitter? You remember the dramas that, that exist on Twitter and how they're created? Let's not forget. Don't, don't you dare think that Honkai Star Rail ain't got the Genshin Impact audience. They do. They do. Oh my God. Tectone did. If Tecton don't get his fat head ass in the back with Amber asking this shit, did he ask that for real? Ain't no, man, ain't no way in hell y'all asked this. <laughs> nah, bro. One of the questions should be, where's my booba? I sent that question in the last feedback. Who asked for? Pets RW? He did? I'll have to ask him myself. You, I, can't, I, can't, I can't trust no hearsays, bro. Y'all out here hearsaying. Dead ass, he did. That's crazy. What would have been a better question, in my personal opinion, would be like, will we get them as actual pets? That, that's like, like saying, are we going to get more of them? But like, will we get them as actual pets? I feel like is a better question to ask. <coughs> Holy shit. Why do we always see future contents on the internet before they are officially released? Oh my god, they just dropped a bomb. Why do we always see leaked content? What a good question. Guys, you got to understand, there's time, there are people who speculate that Hoyoverse leaks the content themselves. There are people who just say that Hoyoverse has other people who are out to get them in malicious, with malicious intent, and so they always take them. Then there's data miners, but like, it is a interesting debacle it is such an interesting debacle why is there always leaked content it's like this is a question that has been floating around since the dawn of genshin impact and hoyoverts being put on the map 
就我来回答吧。Motherfucker sound like a hilly turtle if he switch split places with me, bro. The more attractive the content is, the more attention it receives, and therefore the higher the probability of leaks. True. Once something is leaked, its spread becomes even more uncontrollable. Situation affects both players who want to see it. Situation affects both players who want to see it and those who don't. Yep. When we're telling a story, what is the most important thing besides the content itself? It's how we tell it. We all love video games. When we have some cool, amazing emotional experiences from a video game, we will want to share them with others. But it's a process that requires gradual progression. Even in the process of storytelling, I have to adjust my way of storytelling. Based on my audience reactions, our respective knowledge bases, and how much we can understand each other, it's all about achieving a happy outcome for both sides. That's the true meaning of communication and connection. It's unfortunate that leaks can disrupt this process. What's the leak's biggest impact? It's that this process, which should have been very pleasant, gets brutally interrupted. Sometimes we even see that some leakers, whether intentionally or not, are creating conflicts because their process of telling the story is inappropriate. Leading to discord and misunderstanding among players. It sows confusion and disputes. Nothing's more annoying too when like when I'm trying to when I'm trying to like have a, a um a hypothesis upon the information that I've acquired through the story. I'm trying to like discuss with y'all like what I think's gonna happen. And then some pencil dick nerd comes in here and tries to argue with me about what I think is gonna happen because I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen, right? And he's giving me an argument based off of leaks. And he's trying to present it to me like he's actually theory crafted it. And he hasn't. He's just read the leaks and spoiled the story. It's like, you think you're smart because you read ahead? <laughs> it's so cringe, bro. And so many of them do it. It's like, and I, I'm here innocently trying to like just theory craft what I think is going to happen next. And they're trying to tell me some shit they already, they know that's gonna happen. It's like, it's the most annoying shit on planet Earth. Like they're trying to five head the story when in reality, they just looked at the leaks. It's so annoying. It's easy to prove once you know the answer. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I, that is the cringiest thing of all time, bro. This is us creators' greatest regret. Version 2.0 has already been released, and by now, I'm sure everyone knows that in terms of characters, storylines, stages, and gameplay, we've prepared a lot of surprises, both big and small. Among these surprises, there may be deceitful narratives as well as twists. However, we had imagined that it would be presented to players in the most perfect and best possible form. That shit is heartbreaking. That is, that's so heartbreaking. <laughs> you're, you're, them as the developer, they're so excited to see your reaction. They're so excited to see your reaction, right? And they want you to be like blown away by it, but then it just gets spoiled rotten by leakers. We imagine what kind of spectacle it would be and what kind of joyful emotions we would share with the players on that day. No. But in September 2023, it wasn't as ideal as we hoped. It leaked out in a very terrible way. An ignorant, savage, crude way. Damn, bro is, bro is pissed. <laughs> and I feel him 100%, bro. I hear him. Find it challenging to explain what happened to other staff who believed in this and looked forward to the official. Why did this happen? Why are we so powerless in this situation? I remember you saying something back then. What I said was calling them ignorant? Well, it's true. A lot of people are ignorant. Shit, I'm ignorant sometimes. For long, all new players who joined after launch will be appreciating the story after being spoiled. Then will they still appreciate the story despite knowing about it beforehand? That's what we should focus on. We're creating content in a story that will span years and even decades. Ah, so even though you okay, I get what they're trying to say. So they they had to shift their perspective to well, even if people get spoiled, we're trying to create a story so compelling 
that it doesn't matter how many times you see it, it's still going to be just as good or we're going to preserve that experience as long as we possibly can. That's the true beauty of storytelling. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, but it's not easy, man. But I tell you what, I've watched Harry Potter 435,000 times and I still enjoy that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do something that we have faith in. Do it as well as we can while holding on to that perfect dream. To make more people believe in that kind of thing. Of course, there's still a lot of content in version 2.1 and 2.2. Lord of the Rings, yep. Yep. Damn right. I think it's important to talk about it. You can't be afraid of this, right? I believe that the content will be presented in the way we hope. <laughs> Made the atmosphere heavy. It's good. It's good dialogue. Get it off your chest, bro. Don't be holding that shit back with these PR pussy ass conversations they be doing in the Genshin atmosphere. You know, I, I love this. This is unbelievably based. Get it off your chest. I want to hear it. Your heart rate suddenly went up sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's also important. I keep interjecting, but these are good conversations. This is what I'm saying. I, I, this is my best live stream. Uh, not my best live stream. This is the best live stream I've ever seen and in the Holyoverse games because it's genuine conversations that I have so much I want to contribute to. But I love this type of shit because it also gives the perspective to, now, there's a lot of ignorant motherfuckers. It's not even going to matter. They're just too goddamn dumb to even, like, grasp this, uh, the, the empathy of this. But there's a lot of people who are leaking content who are now going to understand the gravity of why, you know, it's important to not leak content. And when they watch this, it's sharing a narrative. That's why it's important to share and convey. People don't know you're, you're hurting them and, unless you, 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 tell, you, you speak it. You know, you got to speak up. Nobody knows until you say something. So in them communicating what it feels like, in a way, it's getting rid of, you know, it's doing a little damage control to the dumb to leak. <笑>这因为有开拓者们持续不断的一些鼓励还有反馈一些鞭策让我们找到我们继续努力的方向将更好的内容能够呈现给大家非常感谢各位开拓者 从今年的四月二十六日起，也就是新城铁道开拓者周年的纪念日起，开拓者收到的生日邮件中，小蛋糕的款式也即将迎来更新，和我们一同走向新的一年。是的，在马上到来的二点一版本中，崩坏新城
呃，你在游玩的过程中还有可能遇到一些有趣的奇遇事件。啊，那在这些奇遇事件中，开拓者可以做出不同的选择，帮助伙伴们做些决定，或者做出一些大胆的尝试。啊，这些选择最后也可能会。Choice may ultimately lead you to some unexpected bonuses. Bro, how long are we gonna talk about this, man? Holy yapping! 可能也没有那么沉重，因为这个选择是由开拓者支出了投资。Hey, Space spent an awful lot of time talking about this. 支出了不喜欢的选项，我们也给了你反悔重投的机会。Oh, oh my God! They're really talking about that for a while. Oh, hey, I'm in this map. I saw Jimmy. Two people disappeared. He won't be replaced by the Space Peace Company. Then we think that Jimmy has been with us for a long time. He has brought us a lot of content. That's why we gave him a break. Since he's a full-time engineer, he should enjoy his year. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's really not too bad because Jimmy will be back next week. Because the Space Peace Company is a little bit more exciting. I think Jimmy and other people are not too excited. Ah, that's right. I'm really excited. 但我们这次是二点一版本直播，还是聊二点一的事情？那在新建旅行活动中，我们还准备了。Oh my God, dude, they're really going ham on this. 三年之后来试试手气，获得不同数量开拓券，在星际和平过渡公司也能获取一些增益，或者游玩饼干、翻翻烘焙台等小游戏。刚刚说的那个单抽或者三连，我可以加注吗？当然可以，是有这个功能的。只要开拓者对自己的运气。Damn, Rest, thank you for the gift, this baby. 这个功能为角色一样，对吧？那对，就可以成为开拓券大亨。其实，呃，除了这些以外呢，然后这个活动我最喜欢的还有一个有趣的设计，就是它有一个有趣的测试。呃，当我们每盘棋局到达终点的时候，会有一份呃测试问卷。哦，当然很简单，其实没有那么长，就是一个测试题。然后通过这个小测试，根据你的直觉回答，还记得黄泉说过什么吗？就答案并不重要，重要的是你的感受，你当下的选择。然后通过这些选择，最后你就可以知道你更像历史上的哪位无名客。哦，所以像是一种性格或者命途，或者说是相性的测试，是吗？对，命途无名客都行。呃，即便如此，大家的相性性格也有各自区分。然后他会根据你的开拓经历，做出选择，做出更像哪一位星球列车的历代领航员。比方说，金子作为全新的探险家。Holy happening, bro！ 热烈如今最年轻的领航员。那大家经过了二点零的剧情之后，大家也都知道，就是我们整个行业本身就和开拓的这个命题，以及过往经历过的命途的开拓者们。啊，有着千丝万缕的这个联系。那说到这里的话，其实啊，大家也可以期待一下。那平头康尼作为梦想之地，那当我们在这个活动中啊，来到平头康尼的时候，大家可以期待一下，在这里有什么样的惊喜会发生？嗯，所以一定要玩哦。这次的周年活动，星间旅行，在我看来，其实更像是和因为我们全服玩家一起嘛，就像是真正的行于开拓的行者，然后他和宇宙当中无数的无名客开拓者一起重新重铸银轨的这样一个事业，然后他走过阿基维利设下的开拓之旅，然后去走向属于他们的下一站。嗯、哦，有这个感觉了，就大家一起开拓，是吧？对。哦，那我们一起为行于开拓命途的无名客们献上最真诚的祝福吧。期待这个星间旅行活动能给大家开心的体验。周年庆啊，总觉得在这么重要的时刻，应该还有一位很重要的嘉宾在场才对吧？也是完全猜不到是谁。被你搬下去的大卫哥。Oh、uh, wait, I just saw something about an important guest. Oh shit. Hold up, I didn't miss that. I saw it. I think I just spoiled myself on accident. Did they just say the way? Oh shit. 应该还有一位很重要的嘉宾在场才对吧？也是完全猜不到是谁。被你搬下去的大卫哥。哦、oh, ，那个我再重申一下，那个东西不叫搬，我只是担心那个立牌会累，所以我把他请下去休息，请下去休息。好友，给你个大拇哥。Wait, did they say Dwayne's there? 吧，对吧？哎哎哎，哎，可以了。哎，导播，导播，是不是停电了？哈哈 ，Holy plot twist！ 哎，大伟哥来了。Holy plot twist, bro. 就你想知道我立牌拿 ？Bro, bro, 100% just got off the plane. Bro, just got off the plane on 100%, bro. <laughs> bro, better late than never, they say. 其实除了刚刚提到的活动之外呢，我们还为开拓者们准备了一些内容，就由大伟哥跟我们一起宣布吧。好的，首先是意气营建与位面分裂两个。The way he just puts a smile on my face, bro. It's hilarious, bro. He just puts a smile on my face. 也将迎来周年特别版本。没错，意气营建与位面分裂百分之三百。挑战成功。Wait, what did I say? Three hundred what? 特别版本。没错，意气营建与位面分裂百分之三百。挑战成。Three hundred percent. Bro, my free to play account is eaten, brother. My free to play account is eaten. Oh my god. Three hundred percent. 成功即可获得三倍的奖励哦。三倍。那接下来我想。I'm more excited about the about the fodder from that. The fodder converted to building up my free to play account. 是紧张刺激的签到环节了吧？在二点一百码，开拓者可以通过周年庆专属的 twenty pools. Well, 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 not bad. Pim 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 pim, but I'm not impressed. 庆典助理活动啊，以签到的方式。So the anniversary celebration, exclusive festive gifts event, and on April twenty six, we will also send sixteen hundred thirty pools. Well, well, well. 
<laughs> Not bad at all. 30 pulls, eh? Okay. All right. Damn. 30 pulls. So 10 more than Genshin Impact. Right? Or is it 20 more? How many did they get? 30 versus 3? Well, let's be fair here. No, well, let's be fair. It's, it's not actually 3. They did give... I think they gave... 23? Was it 23, guys? 30 to 13? 20 more? Who the f*** is a Genshin Impact player in here who actually knows? Genshin Anniversary 20? 23, I think. I think it was 23. It just wasn't all at once. 13 plus exploration. No, they got 13. 13? 20 for anniversary. Lantern right, 13. It's 13 to 30. A chat, a chat, chat can't, fit, can't get it together. Everybody's spamming 13. You got people. It was 13? Okay, we're now we're now chat's getting it together. So it was it was 13. All right. So 13 to 30. Huh. Anyone saying more than 13 is capping? Okay. 50 fouls. <laughs> what did they Okay, here's the real question. What did Genshin give on their first anniversary? I mean, at this point Obviously, you, you know, we're getting more rewards in Honkai Star Rail. Like, right? Who gives a shit at this point? I, I'll give my personal opinion. If it's, if it's just 30 pulls from Honkai Star Rail, it's, it, I don't think it's anything I'm jumping out my seat for. Like, for me, I think a whole year that's gone by, I always tell you, the whole year that's gone by, you know, the, given the amount of money they make, it's still, a, it's still all that. I'm not going to give you this dick ride ass Honkai Star Rail perspective to make you guys believe that I think that they're incredibly generous. Like at the end of the day, the amount of money they make versus what they give is still, it's still pennies, right? So, but what I will say, if, if we're going to compare it to its, its other um, game, yeah, obviously it's better, 100%. I've, I've spoken about this at length before, guys. Like it's, it's better than Genshin, literally. That doesn't make it God's greatest gift to earth that just makes it better than Genshin Impact. Uh, but evidently, a lot of it is is pretty damn greedy from where I stand. But they did give us a doctor ratio for winning the game of the year, and that had my respect. So, gotcha game of the year. So, 30 pulls, okay? Happy anniversary. Hey, truly, and even then, I want to be clear here. Great year, great year. Because unlike Genshin Impact, what you cannot take from Honkai Star Rail is the constant improvement patch upon patch upon patch, including quality of life, including improving upon in-game. They've done a shit ton in their year in addition to all of this. You can't just say like, we didn't get our selector. You didn't get a selector, but you got quality of life improvements. You got in-game improved upon. You've got multiple four-star selectors. You got Dr. Ratio. You get 30 pulls. You get 10 pulls every patch. There's a lot that goes into it that you can appreciate from this development team, plus transparency, plus answering questions from the community that we actually were asking. There's a lot more on that table that's pretty cool. So I I'm just saying... I am going to hold them to a, a degree of accountability with regards to just overall gotcha greed, but I also won't undermine everything else they've been doing. It's great. <coughs> oh. Not to mention, Akron is probably the greatest goddamn character design I've seen in any of these Hoyoverse games. That shit is absolutely insane. Meh? Actual mint picker spotted in my chat. Saishi House, actual mint pickers spotted in my chat. Who the f meh? What a hating ass. Hey, Mots! Mots, get him out! Mots! Get this, man, bro. Get this hating ass nigga out of here, bro. What the f? Like, bro. Oh, 
unnecessary, my guy. Let me tell you something. Genshin is a dog shit game, but Arlick Chino's design is 12 out of 10. You think I'm gonna get my ass in there and bitter, salty as fuck and say Arlick Chino's design is meh? No! Arlick Chino's design is incredible and immaculate. Genshin is dog water, but I will not hate on a character because I don't like the game or because I'm a Genshin mint picker. Jesus Christ, that was cringe. How hard is it to just admit? Bro knows in every fiber of his being that shit is anywhere of a meh. Let's先轰坏新充铁道周年盛典陈静互动展现已开放我们准备了空间站费洛伯格仙州匹诺康尼四个人区开拓者足不出户就能到场打卡快来线上体验夹娃娃机幸运转盘互动拿大奖吧
年快乐，周年快乐，一周年快乐，一周年快乐！哎，谢谢大家，感谢大家。那么，崩坏 Good energy all around。一前瞻特别节目到这里就要和大家说再见了。再次感谢各位的观看，祝大家做个好梦。Let us meet in every universe. Bye bye. Kids need to stay on the. I guarantee that wasn't a kid. That was a that was a grown ass adult baby. Ah,、uh, what a wonderful live stream, man. I, I'm serious, guys. I, I thanks for first of all, thanks for joining me on the live stream. It was a lot of fun. That was my favorite live stream out of any live stream I've seen. It was great. Not only was the information that's coming in 2.1, not only was that exciting. Every the discussion, the yapping. Even though it was an hour and a half yapping, the yapping was good, man. They discussed so many like topics of conversation where I had to, I had to interject. And if you watch the stream back, you'll under, you'll see that the first thing that came out of my mouth was, "We're not going to pause because we want to get through this hour and a half." But I kept having to pause because I loved every single conversation they were having. So this was great for me. I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. I love this live stream, bro. This live stream was great. But、um, that's all, guys. I am gonna, you know, wait for my daughter to get back, spend some time with her. We're gonna probably make a couple videos today. I'm gonna send this rogue. I'm gonna be sending this your way, my brother.、Um, you don't have to do anything crazy, man. Just keep it like, you know, just keep to the point and like, yeah, like literally no fancy edits, bro. I don't really give a damn. Just try to get it out as fast as possible. When I...